Greetings. Welcome to day four of the 30 days of Halloween. If you read the title of this video, which I'm calling Finding the Magic Around Us, your first impression might be that maybe I have veered a little bit off of my topic about Halloween. Is this really a Halloween video? Well, I want to tell you that it is my opinion that this has just about everything to do with the Halloween season. If we're going to talk about the Halloween season, as the first 30 days of October. Because we are right in the heart of it. We are in the right of a very, very magical time of year. And it is all based on the, El on the Cel ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, which I've been mentioning in the last few videos I mentioned. Um, this is very timely for me that I was, on the, on the video that I was planning on making, it really ties in to a comment I received on yesterday's video. I'm sorry I didn't write, write her name down. Um, but somebody asked, how did we come to learn that certain foods, herbs, or crystals contain specific magical properties? Well, the answer is both simple and complex. <laughs> um, you can, if you want to know if you're, if you're basic and you're starting out, of course I want to say, you can look on the internet, you can look in books, you can ask other witches, watch videos here on YouTube, um, what, they, what they consider to be magical. They're going to be telling you all the time what they consider to be magical. And um, this knowledge is based on centuries of experimentation, really, with our ancestors. If you believe in witchcraft or not, we know that certain foods are good for us because of, you know, through observation, we learn fruits and vegetables are good for us. We learned, you know, we were learning sugars, maybe not so good, processed foods, maybe not so good. The same way that we learn about those things in the mundane world, we have learned about magical things in the magical world. Okay. The ancient women, the wise women, who were the healers in the communities in the earlier days, had to use what was around them for magical purposes, for healing purposes, but also they, they came to know that when they did certain things or ate certain things or used certain ingredients that certain things tended to happen. Okay, And that's what we do today. As witches, we begin to develop a sensitivity. Once you start to use items around you, herbs in your spells or ingredients in your spells or certain stones, you know, um, experiment, by carrying different stones with you or wearing bracelets like I do um, normally. <laughs> How they make me feel, you start to take note of it. Your body starts to take note of it. You start to learn. You start to develop some kind of a relationship with these ingredients or these items one way or another. And what happens is over time, I think we start to develop a, a sensitivity to these things, okay? And we start to look around us and we start to see things in a different light around us. I'll give you a good example, which leads into what we're really talking about specifically today. I would say that probably 20 years ago, if I would have made the Tipsy Betty dessert that I made yesterday, and I want to I wanted mention too that, that I made it yesterday and I, the video just went up today, the Tipsy Betty video, and I didn't think about it because I made it on the 2nd of October and it wasn't even thinking about it. Um, I realized today when I got up that today was is my father's birthday. It would have been my father's birthday, October 3rd. He would have been 98 years old. He's been deceased for a few years. But he's very much in my mind and he's very much in my mind when I was making the tipsy Betty yesterday and how I said that I was really probably going to use that dish to honor him and some of my other ancestors as one of my offerings um, later in the month when we get to Samhain when I'm actually doing maybe a um, a dinner, a meal, sharing a meal with some of my ancestors, having a maybe a jump supper, um, which we'll talk about later. But I thought, oh, how funny that was that that came up and here it was his birthday and I didn't even realize I had forgotten for a moment it was his birthday today the 3rd of October. So anyway, that happened to me. But anyway, we started to develop a sensitivity. And if I would have made that, that dish for him, possibly even when he was alive or when he was much younger, um, I would have taken the peels 
and the cores and the seeds from that, those apples, and I would have thrown them in the trash, which a lot of you would do. And I'm not trying to judge. Don't tell me, get me wrong, I'm not trying to judge you. But what I want to say is, I came here and I started gardening. I started, oh, I got chickens. And a lot of people would take those, they have chickens like I do, um, would take those peels and maybe feed them to their chickens. The chickens would enjoy them very much. We wouldn't want to give them the seeds, so we would pick the seeds. We wouldn't give them apple seeds, because I don't think anybody is supposed to, even chickens, really ingest a lot of apple seeds. A few seeds I don't think will hurt you, but if you, in great numbers, if you get a lot of seeds, it might. They have a certain toxicity about them. So if I was thinking about it, I might pick out the seeds before I would give cores to my chickens to pack. The peels, though, would be quite safe for them to pick out, and they would probably be delicious. I would love them. Or I could throw them in my compost, my compost, where the seeds would break down. Everything would break down in my compost, in which I would get back it through the magic of the soil, right? And enrich and feed my soil, which is important to do for the coming of the year. The ancient Celts that we talked about, who where the festival began of Samhain, originated for me, at, at any rate, um, for many of us, they use things around them when they have their, their at this time of the year at their final festival their final harvest festival um they use every bit remember i said how every little bit of the food what i couldn't preserve for winter they would feast on they would eat they would consume it the bones even the bones they took the bones and threw the bones into the fire they sacrificed to the gods they sacrificed to the spirit they sacrificed they made sacrifice and offerings offerings to their gods to the gods to the spirits within the soil for the neck for the upcoming harvest next year okay the the um bones could be dried and used for things powdered bones could be dried and powdered and used for things a lot of people use bones in their spells today also i want to say that they also did things such as just the rocks around them rocks laying around them they would take those rocks and they i think i mentioned this before write their names on their or not maybe not their names but put their mark on the rocks to identify it was theirs throw those in the fire and then the next day following Samhain, um they would it would the shape of the rock whatever happened to the rock would be a way of foretelling what was to come for them personally in the future so every little bit of around of, of their world they utilized in the way they could so in that way i'm doing the same thing okay i i'm either going to give these peels or like i said the peels or the leavings instead of putting them in the trash they will either go to the compost pile or they will go to my chickens or i will do something more with them additionally today is saturday while i'm filming you will not see this to sunday but one of the things that my husband has done today because we're still under the influence of the full moon, which occurred on Thursday, is he has, has taken the seeds, any seeds that he found within my apple leavings from yesterday, all my peels and pits and those things, the pile that I put in the refrigerator, <laughs> um, he, any seed that was still intact and whole, he set aside and he put it in a special dish, um, which he's going to set aside to dry which he will then set on our altar in our in my parlor, in the parlor there, our main altar. And <clears throat> they will remain there until they dry out. And then when they're dry, he, we, he will use those to probably, to make a talisman of protection for us. Okay. Um, everything, not everything, but <laughs> look around you, get into the habit of being more sensitive to what you're around. Look and see what you have available to you and try to determine is there a way, is there possibly a way that I could use it? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're on to the topic that I'm going to do today. I'm going to say is I'm going to be making my vinegar. I'm going to show you how to make vinegar. If you're interested, I think some of you really are. I've already said you were. We're going to just show you how to make. Um, let me just do something. I'm going to look. I have notes here just in case I don't forget what I'm talking about. And um, today I'm going to make some vinegar and show you how to, to make vinegar. It's something very simple. And you can make vinegar out of just about anything. 
um, which is what's so wonderful. If you will notice behind me on the counter, behind me, those jars, those are vinegars that I'm making. I have, most of them are citrus vinegars that I'm making out of the peels. Um, they're not really the peels. Peels you can use, but what I have used are after the oranges have been juiced. So that's the pulp and the peel of the orange. Most of those are going to be citrus vinegar which we use as the basis of our cleaning, for cleaning here in our home. So we use a lot of that. Um, but we, you could also use it in other things, in salad dressings or whatever. And one of them, one of them is peach vinegar, which is made from the peels of peaches when I made some special peach jam. Okay. Today I have, remember when, if you were watching the other day, the apples from yesterday that I peeled and I even have apples in here that I had sliced up to show you. Cut up some of the apples to show you the, for the apples that I dried, that I dried in my dehydrator that I'm going to store to use those apples in magic, but also as I'll put, hang them on my Yule tree, the Yule. The rest of them is also, what I have left is some pieces of apple, some apple cores, some broken, which contain some broken seeds, and then the peels. And what I'm going to do, really simply, I have a big jar. You don't have to have this exact jar, but this is a this is a half gallon jar. And well, it's two quarts. It's a really good size because you can make it. You know, you get it. It's a good like this. It's a real good um, size. You could make it smaller, but you know, it's much easier if you have more. <laughs> you have more. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take. Let me see. I'm going to take the. Um, All these apple peels and cores, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put them in the jar. Just you know, there's nothing complicated about this. Anybody can do this, okay? And nothing has been done to these peels. They just like I said, we're in the refrigerator since yesterday, and I have another jar here because I probably have enough to do two jars. If I could. There's also some bits of apples in here because some of the apples had some brown spots in them because some of them were a little overripe that I had in my refrigerator. We have apples in this house all the time. We eat, my husband and I share apples for a lot of the year. Um, at lunchtime, we'll share an apple or a, or a snack. And our dogs go nuts. We share with the dogs too. Whoops! They don't get a whole apple of it. They're gonna get a piece now. There's a piece for somebody under there. So I just really have the perfect amount for two. I might have a little more than I need. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna, for, for, for your sake, I'm gonna show you. I really only need like half of a jar. So I think my chickens are going to get some treats. So I need just about a half of a jar. Half of a jar of peels or pieces of apple. These my chickens are going to enjoy. Okay, so you put that in there. Then you need two ingredients. Two ingredients. You need sugar, just plain sugar, plain white sugar. Of course, if you get organic sugar, it would be wonderful if you get... You can use... Uh, it cannot be sweetener. It cannot be artificial sugar because the sugar is what the apples are going to use in the process of becoming vinegar. They're going to eat it. This is feeding the apples. It's not going to make a sweet vinegar. It's food. And I'm just putting one quarter cup of sugar in each jar. And that's approximately. Okay. Quarter cup of sugar. And then. I have here filtered water. Our water sucks. <laughs> if you if your water if you have well water something like that good for you 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 can use that. I wouldn't use city water because that has a lot of chemicals. That's chlorine, which is not gonna you don't want to put chlorine in in your vinegar. Um, so if you don't have anything like that, I would buy wa you know water like go to the store and buy. You could buy distilled water something like that, or just drinking water good from the from the store. 
but this is this is filtered. These filters work really well. And I'm just going to add water about to this part of the jar. I'll show you. Um, leave about an, two inches at the top. They need to have some space. And I'm going to have to filter some more water. I can see that. So I'll put this one aside until later. I mean, until I'm done with the vinegar, I'll show you. Well, no. As a matter of fact, let me get, I'll just get some more water. Through the magic of television, <laughs> I got some more water. And so I'm going to fill the second jar, like I did the first, up to where this jar starts to bend here, which leaves about a, a good headspace. We need a headspace an empty space, when I say headspace, we need that. It's very important that we have that in the process of making vinegar because we're going to incorporate air. Air is a very important part. So we have to have room in the jar for some air. If we filled it right to the top, it would be no air. And, and I just I just have a chopstick here that I use for everything. And you see that the, my fruit is floating to the top. It's, it's doing that right now. As, as it progresses, that fruit will eventually um, sink to the bottom. But right now it's at the top and I'm just taking my chopstick and I'm trying to stir that sugar that I put in. I'm not gonna get it really dissolved, but it's gonna dissolve a good bit. Start the process of getting dissolved. Getting a nice mix on it. Pushing down the fruit, it's gonna keep coming up, not to worry. Um, please note, you do not have to have a canning jar. These are jars that could be canned. I'm not using this as canning jars because I'm not using the lid. You know, the two piece lids that your canning jar comes, the little round disc lid, and then the ring that tightens it down. Because I'm not going to seal these. We need to be able to get air into these jars. Okay, so there's one. And then I'm going to stir it. And this stirring process is something that you want to repeat. Like if you could daily for maybe a couple weeks. It's not necessary. I could just leave it but I'll tell you why in a minute. But this is all you see. I'm just trying to stir things up a little bit. Work the sugar throughout. And then, because we need air, I'm not gonna use the lid. I'm just using a piece. I just use a piece of, as you can see back here on my, um, behind me, those jars. This is just a piece of linen, a scrap of linen. You could use a piece of cheesecloth. You could use a piece of cotton fabric. It has a little bit of holes. It has holes so it can breathe. But, so it's gonna keep flies. Oh, if you've ever had fruit flies in your kitchen, you know they can be a real nuisance. So we do wanna cover this to keep out flies and, and dirt and things like that. But we wanna be able to let air through it. Okay, so just using, just using this, uh, I just put the linen on top of the linen square on top of the jar and then I just took a big rubber band whoops to hold that down hold it in place you do not want to use this is not the place to use one of those fermenting lids because we're not fermenting we're making vinegar we want to have the air we want to allow air and by stirring every day we're for at least a couple of weeks we're, we're rushing the process where we're incorporating air continually into this mixture and it's going to the fruit the peels whatever is left on the fruit is going is can, the sugars from the fruit and the sugars that we added is being eaten by the <laughs> it's being eaten by the um microorganisms that are in, being introduced in here through the air and it is converting those sugars to vinegar but before it converts them to vinegar, it first converts them to alcohol. First alcohol, and then vinegar. I want to emphasize here the reason that we're using fabric to cover these jars. We are not using the lids to seal the jars that come with the jars that are for canning, that are meant to completely keep air out. Um, because we want to incorporate the air into this mixture. That's what's going to give us the vinegar, okay? We need to cover it. If we leave it completely uncovered, 
the bugs are going to get in there, the fruit are going to have fruit flies, dirt could get in. This is to protect it, but it's porous. It has, it has, it's going to allow, it's going to allow the air and the gases that are made as the sugar in both the fruit and the additional sugar that we added is consumed. And the process begins where that is going to be turned, that water is going to be, there's going to, the fruit is going to be producing the vinegar. They're going to be making the vinegar. That whole process in, it needs to have air. Think about a bottle of wine that is sealed. A bottle of wine, once you uncork it and you open it and you drink it, you can buy all kinds of things on the market where you, that are supposed to reseal that bottle to store it if you're considered to store it long, um, long term. I personally do not have, a, our family does not understand the concept of leftover wine. <laughs> it just doesn't, doesn't happen for us. So we don't have the problem. Because also, I don't mean to imply that we're heavy drinkers. We do eat, drink wine regularly, but we also use wine in cooking and all kinds of things. So it would never just be sitting out an open bottle of wine with, and anybody use it for anything. <laughs> just wouldn't happen. Okay. So um, this process of making vinegar, we need the air. So we don't want to seal the air out. But if you left that wine out of a bottle, a cork out of a bottle of wine, or didn't seal it properly, and you put it on your shelf and you want to leave it there for a couple months, weeks, or a couple months, eventually it's going to turn to vinegar. If you've ever tasted wine that's gone bad, somebody who stored bottled wine perhaps in their trunk of their car, who it got hot, and then opened it up for a special occasion, and oh man, that was not anything you wanted to drink, it was vinegar. Okay, that's what we want. We want to have that. So we're you want to have this opened. You would not use a lid. I don't either. It's on the box here. This is the lids that I have for fermenting. They're called pickle pipes. I could open this and show you what it looks like. I don't want to confuse you. Um, if I could even get it open. There we go. I don't want to confuse you. But these, yeah, these lids, they look like a baby bottle lid. They have a nipple on the top. There's just a tiny, tiny hole. And you would use these if you want to ferment because you don't want to, the air to come in. You only want the gas to, expit, to escape so it doesn't explode, okay? That's why you use them fermenting. We're not fermenting. You're making vinegar, which is a completely different process. We're not making alcohol where we want to keep the oxygen out. We're not fermenting, we are making vinegar. So we do want the air to come in. By take, revisiting these jars every day for like two weeks, and just with a chopstick or whatever you use, a long handle spoon or something, just give it a stir, take this off, push it down, disturb it, just give it a little bit of a stir. Any kind of a mold that's maybe starting to form on those screws or whatever, this is going to really slow down that process. The mold's not going to really be, it's not going to hurt anything because the mold is going to, if there's any kind of a mold, it's not mold that would hurt you. And if you knocked it down into the, uh, into the, into the jar, back into the jar, once it becomes vinegar, it's going to be eating that anyway. So it's not a big problem. That's how we get rid of mold is with vinegar. Um, but it could be also spooned out. It's nothing harmful is going to happen. I think I even developed scobies on a couple of these back here. You're going to eventually see a mother probably um, form in your vinegar, which is a good thing. You want a mother. <laughs> I pay a lot of money to get organic apple cider vinegar that I purchased from the store with a mother in it. It's that cloudy thing that's in the vinegar, which happens. If you store a jar of vinegar or a bottle of vinegar in your cupboard for a long time, you will eventually start to see that mother. And you go, what is in my vinegar? That's a good thing. <laughs> that's a really good thing. Okay, but anyway, this was just a simple thing to show you. Um, you don't have to really do anything else. You're gonna start to see this bubbling when you stir, particularly you're gonna start seeing bubbles coming up, little bubbles in there. You wanna see that, that means that there's, that's the gas. That is, um, it, it means it's working, it's making, it's really good. If you want to, um, after maybe the first couple days, like two or three days, that bubbles might start to slow down. 
it, that's going to depend on how much sugar your peels or cores or whatever it is you put in your jar, your orange peels or your peach peels or whatever. Some people make vinegar out of, out of like herbs, which don't have any sugar. But these have sugar, it depends. If it's, if it's eating the sugar up too fast, it might, you might want a little more sugar. You might want to add after two or three days another quarter cup of sugar. Give it another stir. Let it go long. Okay. You're going to want this to, then you can let it sit. Once your fruit, you know, comes down under and you're satisfied that nothing's floating up to the top all the time, and the bubbling is sort of, you know, just very, not too much bubbles, you could just leave it sit. How long? Well, probably at least 30 days on your counter. Um, you start, you smell it. You're going to start to smell when it starts to smell like vinegar. That's what you want. It's going to start to smell like vinegar. And you all know what vinegar smells like. You can give it a little taste. You can put a spoon down there, give it a little taste. And if it tastes a little bit of vinegar, but you want it to be a little stronger, let it go a little bit longer. Let it go longer. It's not going to hurt anything. You can let it go as long as you want. Ideally, you're looking for pH, if you try to check a pH, of about 3, 3.0, which you can get little test strips in drugstores or anywhere, pH testing strips. You don't have to. Your taste buds, you can trust your taste buds, but it gets the way you want it. Then you can decant it. You can put this all this through a strainer, get, all the, get rid of your peels and your pits or whatever's in there, um, and you're good to go. If you've done something like Citrus vinegar, you're going to want to put it through a strainer a couple of times, probably even through some cheesecloth, because you're going to get bits of that peel in there, especially if you're going to want to use it for cleaning, and you're going to want to use the spray bottle. Um, it sometimes clogs it, so you want to get as much as you can. Apple cider vinegar, you pretty much just strain it, put it through a strainer, and you're good to go. Put it in a bottle, and close the bottle, and keep it in your cupboard, in a dark cupboard. Use it when you want. So, you can just use it as vinegar. So that is the magic. Isn't that the magic? Taking things that are done, taking the peels, taking apples that are well spent, rotting, real on their way to, to rot, and making something new again. That is the whole theme of the, of the season of harvest. Something new coming out. Something new. Cleansing, getting ready for the new. Making something, transforming something to the new. Okay? Now, what can we do with this vinegar once we make it? Well, you can do the same thing you do with any old, This, in this case, it's apple cider vinegar with, that you would use apple cider vinegar for. You might use it for salads or you might drink it or you might, you know, um, use it for cleaning like I do, or like you know, a lot of people do. Or, But, oh, I have some magical ways to use it. <laughs> and that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. This particular vinegar is not going to be ready for tomorrow. But again, you don't have to use this particular vinegar. You can use vinegar that you've already made or vinegar that is from the store. And we're gonna say, what can we do magically with vinegar? So stay tuned for that video, which is coming up tomorrow. And thank you for watching today. And as always, I wish you blessings.